Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed. The subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, happy Wednesday. How are you guys? It's good to see you. I'm Sarami, just in case you're new here because I did share this um, sew along in the five out of four patterns group on Facebook, uh, just because I know there's a lot of big fans of five out of four patterns and um, I just thought maybe someone was making hide sweatshirts for kiddos. And there's a adult version, uh, women's called Donna and the men's is called Eric. So I'm pretty sure the sewing is probably identical. So if you wanna make the adult version, go for it. Hi, Hannah, hi, Carrie. All right, so if you're new here, um, just a couple of quick things. If you've never been to a live stream before, um, you don't have to chat you don't if you don't want to one thing that I will say is that if you just at least want to watch the chat and see what I'm reacting to or what other people are saying what I recommend what we all recommend is under the window I think like like right here it's here for me on the desktop <laughs> um, it says there's like a little toggle that says live chat or top chat and we recommend you put it on live chat because for some reason it filters out certain messages and there's no rhyme or reason. So I, and I sometimes miss things too because I don't toggle it on. Hi Stephanie, hi Sydney. And you are absolutely welcome to lurk. You don't have to chat, but if you want to, you might have to create or log in to create a YouTube account called a channel or log in. That's the only way you can chat. If you're not watching this live, leave a comment because I, I love seeing comments and YouTube loves my loves comments. They love comments over chat, I think. <laughs> but anyway, this is an amazing group of people. The, everybody here that comes to the live stream is awesome. They are all different sewing levels. They're all over the world. They speak all different languages. And it's a really amazing group of folks. And... Um, Sometimes they heckle me, you know, because, you know, that's how they are and that's totally fine. But it's all in good fun. You'll see me make mistakes, but I have been sewing a really long time. Um, it doesn't mean I'm an expert in everything. And it, I haven't made a sweatshirt like this in a few years, actually. Quite a few years. <laughs> and I'm not even sure I've actually sewn one, like, total full-on like ready to wear looking hoodie with the eyelets and the draw cord, the zipper, the rib. I know I've done all these things, maybe just not like, I probably put my own spin on it. So it's kind of cool. Oh, cool, Carrie. Hi, Delwyn. Um, so I did make one of these off camera because I'm making them for my niece and nephew because it's, you know, back to school and it's cold where they live. And I'm always desperate for projects that I don't have to keep because I sew, I cut something out every Wednesday. Usually, Melinda, hi. 
Um, I usually I sew part one on Thursday and part two on Saturday. And I know that my time doesn't work for everybody, but it is always uploaded. And that's why there's that long intro on how you can speed it up, make me sound like a chipmunk, put on the closed captioning. Uh, I do all those things myself. Hi, Emily. So, um, but right now we are in the middle of a blazer sew along. And so every Saturday I'm chipping away at sewing my own blazer. Everybody's pretty much finishing theirs. Like not everybody, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Other folks are like, ah, I'm going to wait. And they're catching up to me. So we're all at different stages. Um, so it is a little different. I'm doing a lot. Like I'm trying to sew an entire garment in one stream on Thursdays. So sometimes that one's a little bit long. Hi, Mafio. How's it going? So what else do I want to say if you're new here? Feel free to ask questions or tell us what you're working on. This group is so good also at asking resource questions like, hey, I have this really great striped knit and I'm looking for you know, a top that's long sleeves but not a V-neck. Um, I'm curvy size. What do you guys think? And they will absolutely come up with some suggestions. And um, I sometimes will pull them up on my screen so you can see them, which is really fun. So, so yeah, anyway, I'm making this for my niece and nephew because like I said, I just really don't need a whole new garment every week of the year. So I'm always looking for sponsors and I am a five out of four ambassador, which means that they send me a pattern, but I still need to buy all of my fabric and everything. So hi Libby. Yeah, the hive mind is amazing. Well pocket, it's happening live in Sacramento, woo. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, and my nephew requested all black. And so I can't sew this on camera. My camera is, I can barely see it. Let me tell you, I had to take out four inches of stitching and I i had to have it like up against my box light. <laughs> I was telling my husband this and he was like, yeah, there's no way I could see that either. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. So I made this off camera and honestly, I'm kind of glad I got to do that. In general, I usually come to the project really green. Like I will look it over. I've taped the pattern pieces together if I printed it as a PDF. Um, I know what I need. And most of the time I have everything I need. I know sometimes I forget something, but um, I come to it pretty green as if I was you sitting at home at 11 o'clock at night sewing this, right? So, so that we can address anything that comes up together. But trying to sew a whole garment sometimes all in one and during a live stream is a little bit a, like a lot. So I'm really glad I got to do a practice run of this. And I sewed this really quickly yesterday. And I thought, oh, this is going to take kind of a while because there's the eyelets for the draw cord. Um, there's the center front zip, you know, there's pockets, there's ribbing. And I thought, you know what, Sarami, you're probably underestimating this. But it actually went together pretty quick, except when I needed to remove four inches right here and I almost went blind. <laughs> so, so yeah. Oh, Anna, you did twill tape neck binding, which my twill tape's too wide, but it's going to be fine. Right. So, so yeah, it's uh, turned out really great. Uh, a trouble. Sh oh, these are the only two black eyelets I had that would fit this massive chunky um, draw cord. In fact, I have something to show to you about this draw cord that, which kind of was my saving grace with it. Um, and, uh, they were, they're kind of big, but they were the only black ones I had. And I think I even scuffed them up a little bit, but you know, they'll be fine. Right. So they'll be fine. But I got, I did pretty good. It matched my neckline across. I matched my stitching there. I matched my pocket I matched my ribbing. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, and I'm wearing my Piper. I love this. I, I can't believe I didn't need to do any fitting in the back for my crazy lower back. It's awesome, I love it. This linen's really stiff. God, I can't imagine, this will be so great in like a rayon or something, don't you think? I'm wearing it with my glissando pants, which are now a little bit big, <laughs> but they're so comfortable, I'm down for it, so. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't taken any pictures of me wearing it yet, so I'll try and take some today. I told my sister this morning, I was like, everything's going to show on this black hoodie every time he wipes his nose on his sleeve. And she's like, oh, thankfully, I think he's past that. I'm like, yeah, because it's going to look like snail tracks on his sleeve. <laughs> but anyway, so my niece picked out this pretty amazing. <laughs> I love it. This is probably going to be one or more. Uh, 
novelty sews and it is awesome, isn't it? It's polar fleece, so it's very soft and fuzzy. I have the camera overblown right now, sorry, just so you can see the black details. So, you're scared of zipper installs like this one, Sydney? Sydney, this one's kind of the easiest one. Okay, time. I haven't found my husband done. What do you guys call that black version with a zip all the way down? Um, well, if it has a hoodie, it's this is a zip front hoodie. Like if I were working in the industry, it would be a zip front hoodie. Or a zip front sweatshirt. Both would be accurate. I mean, I wouldn't call it a coat <laughs> at all. And even jackets, a bit of a stretch, but I come from the outdoor industry. Hi, Terry, how's it going? Hoodie jacket. Oh, so what are, what are the um, stakes in this fight? And did we side with you? More importantly, Sydney, did we take your side? <laughs> Oh, I don't have like some things on. Let me put the um, viewer count on. We love seeing that, don't we? Oh, it's, I knew there was one that had fell into a weird spot. There we go. Um, what else am I missing on the screen? Anything? I think that's everything, right? Yeah. All right. Um, it, uh, so what I also wanted to say is, oh, I'm an affiliate for five out of four. I didn't even remember that until two days ago. And so I put a link, I didn't put a link in the description because when I'm going live, I, it's limited. Like I, I can put some things in, but it's like, I'm kind of pressed for time. So I, um, just put my code in. There's just like a code and it's just so, so live. So if you want, you can use that, but there's other five out of four ambassadors as well that you might want to support as well. Um, and they said they were going to give me a discount code and they're trying to figure out how to do that. So if you want to hold tight for that, maybe by tomorrow for the sewing stream, I'll have a discount code for you, which was incredibly generous. I couldn't believe it. So that's pretty cool. Zip front hoodie sounds better. They call it a coat. Nah, no. Nah. Hoodies don't have zippers. Oh, okay. I can see that argument. Um, I think a long, for a long time before zip front hoodies became popular, there were just hooded sweatshirts. And that's what we said, hooded sweatshirt with a kangaroo pocket. And um, that would have been accurate. And then the zipper kind of started becoming more prevalent. <laughs> for 18 years. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so let me tone down the brightness so you can see my pattern pieces a little bit. But it's like that. I think you've just brought the argument to the stream. <laughs> it's the ye old pineapple on pizza argument. I hate that argument. It happens like in every gaming stream I see it. I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> All right. So let's talk a little bit about the pattern. Then we're going to start cutting it out. So I am going to be doing this straight up like a classic hoodie you would buy off the shelf. You don't have to do all these details like the um, eyelets. You could use buttonholes. You don't, so don't be nervous about that. Um, I will be installing the eyelets. I have to say though that I don't do that very often. Like how many times do you need eyelets? Like we do rivets, we do jeans, um, like jean rivets and we do tack buttons. Um, I've done a lot of snaps lately, but eyelets and grommets, those are kind of a unique situation. So I think the only other time I did it was actually this year on the Kelly Anorak for the draw corn. <laughs> wool coats can be waterproof because wool is naturally water repellent. How do you like them apples? Sydney literally lives somewhere where she has to have a raincoat a zip up hoodie, a jacket, and a coat. And she would wear all those different things for different weather situations because she lives in the Pacific Northwest, right, Sydney? In California, we could have all those things, but we'd pull one of them out for the entire winter. And who knows which one it would be. <laughs> Hello, Nancy, how's it going? 
All right, so the kids hide, so they call it the kids hide sweatshirt jacket. So there you go. You got all of them, Sydney. Um, it comes in a cropped version and a regular length version. It comes short or long sleeves. There's a hood option, a collar option, um, and cuffs with or without thumb holes. And we're gonna do the cuffs with thumb holes. So we're doing everything on this. <laughs> and then, hi April, how's it going? We're having a sweatshirt debate. <laughs> um, the sizing on the kids comes in zero to three months. So three months all the way up to size 14. Uh, this black one that I just showed you was the size 14. And then the one I'm making today or tomorrow is a size eight. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm just looking at the, there's so many pages of information just to get everything you kind of need. Oh. Um, if you want finished measurements, let me know, but tell me which size because there's a lot of them. So, all right, there we go. That's it. So I got all my pattern pieces. I'm going to be using this fabric as the waistband and the, um, cuffs. It's pretty stretchy. Oh, this is the right side. I asked my sister just now if my niece would like navy blue or black, and um, she thinks she'd like the navy blue, and it's got this kind of heathery look. I got this from Hearts Fabric. This stuff's amazing. It is so soft. I don't even know what it is. It's a French terry for sure, because it's only brushed. It's like a brushed French terry. The back is not flocked like a sweatshirt fleece, and it's really, really stretchy, and it comes in a ton of colors. It's amazing. It's so soft. I use it for a few things here and there. So record your bird. <laughs> <Does he? laughs> How old's your son, Terry? I thought your sons were older. Oh, right. You do have a younger one. Yeah. Yeah. So Terry, I think I'll have a discount code tomorrow. And it was pretty generous. I was kind of surprised. I, I just asked, I was like, when I remembered I had the affiliate link, I was like, oh, maybe I should poke around on that. And so I was looking at it and there's like a few things I can do as an affiliate. I can request a discount code if I'm going to like promote one of their patterns. And so I, I just said, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, um, just poking around in this affiliate like portal and I saw this, can I do that? And they were like, oh yeah, let us, let us uh, work on that. So they were really nice about it. Um, yeah, anyway, but five out of four patterns every week, I think has a promo pattern. And the one, the thing I'm sewing in October, I am making one of their promo patterns. And I think, um, remember we were talking about like, should I make it the weekend of the promotion or should I make it after? So people have time to get it. I think I'm gonna make it the weekend of the promotion because that way people know, oh, I know that there's gonna be, there's a sew along for this. And it's, it's just the men's raglan uh, shirt, but I am gonna do it with a serger and cover stitch and I'm gonna do it in a sweater knit. So it's gonna be kind of like a nice soft pullover for him. And five out of four patterns has lots of sizes and you're going to see if you shop their website that they feature all of their customers makes in all of the sizes. And so if you look at each image, you're, you can see what size they sewed. It says it at the bottom right hand corner, which is pretty amazing. It's very inclusive and they specialize in knits. I don't know if they would say that, but I would almost everything they do is knits and there's some really unique stuff. Hi, Elena. How's it going? <laughs> when you put your flip flops away. Oh no, Melinda. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So welcome to the world of garment sewing and you entered this world like like you've probably garment sewed before Melinda, but you're like, you really attacked it the past year in a year where we've all kind of changed sizes. <laughs> Hi Margie, how's it going? Oh, cool. That's awesome. Bramble color, purple, pink. That sounds cute. Lots of pictures, lots of options. Yeah. 
I usually look for the picture that's like in a solid so I can see all the details. All right, let's do it. All right, so the pattern pieces I'll be using today are, uh, just, be, just so you know like for sure what view I'm making, because uh, I'm making the longer view and I'm making, um, doing all the things. So I'm doing a long sleeve. I've got my front and my back. I got my hood. I'm not lining the hood. I, I feel like honestly, um, while I think the aligned hood is probably a little bit easier to sew, I think you'll be happier with the results of an unlined hood because of the bulk that it does on the neckline. The neckline can be a little bit trickier, but don't, you know, then maybe don't use the twill tape. So that would be what I would say. Yeah, so what shirt are you making, Melinda? Yeah, right, Carrie, exactly. All right, and so I'm gonna use the long sleeve thumb hole cuff because she wants a thumb hole, which means I also have these little fiddly bits here. That's for the thumb hole. The kangaroo pocket and not that. <laughs> there is no pattern piece for the waistband. You need to cut that out from a chart which I didn't realize I didn't have when I made my nephew. So I'm telling you that so you print that page out too. The Ogden Cami. You know, the Ogden Cami, Melinda, that would be such a good one to do on the bias. Oh, the another, you're looking for a camisole in a woven fabric. Is that what I'm reading here? You want a camisole in a woven fabric. Because I did the love notions in knit but in it. I need a drink of water, sorry. Mmm. That's cool, Nancy. I made that one for um, hearts. I remember you sharing yours because you had already made it. I feel like of all the things that I've made, I think pretty much everything I've made, it comes out pretty good. You know, like, I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying like, I'm not saying that as, as, a, as like as a result of my sewing. I'm saying like how it looks on me. Cause there's things we sew for other companies like that. When we sewed that for Hearts Fabric, uh, so I don't, I don't own it, I don't get to keep it. And they sent this um, incredible peacock print rayon. Remember that stuff? <clears throat> and I thought, oh my gosh, this is so my style of dress. And I swear, when I put that on, I was like, oh yeah, this is not my style of dress. <laughs> and that is one of the rare things that I've sewn that I'm like, yeah, I don't think that this is my style, which is really weird. Cause I really think a wrap would be really good on me. I've got a very like hourglass style body and I'm always trying to hide my belly. And I thought, oh good, I can knock this little wrap thing right in front. <laughs> And really, I just didn't think it was very flattering on me. And then I saw Lexi from Hearts Fabric, because she and I are, if you saw us in person next to each other, we're, we look completely different, but we wear the same size. <laughs> and um, it looked incredible on her. Hack it into a dress for this amazing embroidered zodiac mesh fabric I got. Melinda, did you see the saltwater slip by uh, Friday Pattern Company? Not that you need one more, fa more one more pattern to add to your whole journey there. Hey, Penny. That, they, they can be a little fiddly. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I know new people are like, geez, Louise, get on with the cutting. Or they'll just come back for the sewing. All right, so the front is not cut on the fold, but the back is. So let's just flip this fabric over so that the fold's towards me. <clears throat> Oh, and let me talk to you, let me show you my notions too. I feel like I should probably go over all the notions I have for this. So I have a separating zipper and separating zipper means that, you know, when you unzip it at the bottom, it, the bottom of the jacket will, will come apart, right? So uh, we all know when we're super excited to make something and then we realize, oh, I need a separating zipper, bummer. All right, um, and then I'm using this twill tape that I swear was not supposed to be this wide, uh, but it is. I think that if you were using twill tape, 
I think three quarters of an inch would be the widest you would want to go for the neck. This is a solid inch. And um, I, I did the translation in the millimeters, so I'm not sure why it's that wide, but I'm using eyelets. I'm pretty sure the only ones I have that will fit the draw cord diameter I have are these kind of cheapy ones from Dritz. And so this, I have the little anvil here to put it on. And then these, these are the tools you need. If you're like me and you get go to your little like hardware drawers and then you're like, what goes to what again? I do this every time. So that's what I did. Pulled it out. So you need the, the rounded, um, hammer mabob thing, you know, the little, the post with the curved thing. You need an anvil and I, and the anvil meaning it's just like this um, disc that you can set it on. You see there's like a circular shape. So, and you only need two if you want to do that, or you can just do buttonholes. <clears throat> I think buttonholes are great. I don't really think, even though that's a high stress area for your draw cord, unless you have a kid that's always doing this, you know, like those kids that sit there and always pull on it, you probably uh, don't have to worry about it. I think most people don't even use the draw cord, right? So. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Melinda. Stick to it then. My nephew is uh, 12. <clears throat> this is my niece's though, and she's uh, uh, nine, 10. Iron the zipper before you sew them on. What? Uh, you're gonna, you do, they do not need to be the, the exact length, Sydney. It's really nice though, and I'll show you why when we're sewing it. But trust me, some pattern companies, especially some smaller pattern companies, don't design their patterns so that they fit the standard lengths of zippers. And sometimes they just can't because there's too many gradations and sizes. But if you can find a zipper that's the right length, it does help because then you can put the tape in the seam of the neckline. But if, you, if yours is too long, yeah, you just wanna go longer rather than shorter usually, you can fold it down. You know, and I've done that several times. Yeah, right, Nancy? Wouldn't that be awesome? Why'd you say iron the zipper before I sew it on? Are you thinking of an invisible zipper? Because I do that for sure. All right, and then the last thing I wanted to show you, which was the crazy weird thing I discovered, was I got this draw cord from um, Waywack, and yeah, this is the smallest amount I could buy. <laughs> um, so... It's, it's chunky, man. Look at this chunky thing. It is so chunky, you guys. So it's like almost three eighths of an inch thick. They would probably say it's a quarter of an inch, but it's so, it is so thick. Okay. But here's what happened when I was trying to poke it through the eyelet. This sleeve came off. Check this out. So there's a knitted sleeve around it. See that? So I removed the sleeve and I actually kept it because it could be used as a draw cord as well. And so you'll see it's flat now. This is the flat sleeve that went around it. And then this solid cotton cord draw cord was in there. I was like, is this like Matryoshka dolls? Like, can I pull another sleeve off? <laughs> but, oh, it strengthens it. Interesting. Yeah. You got distracted by your garden. That sounds nice. It's such a nice time to be in the um, garden. It strengthens it. I've never heard that, Stephanie. That's so interesting. I'm surprised. Oh, okay, Sydney. We'll see you in a bit. All right, so I, while I think that this draw cord was way too thick for a kid's sweatshirt, I was pretty excited that I just pulled the sleeve off and I feel like I could use this as a draw cord as well. You know, like those flat tape draw cords. This is probably it. So, okay. Now we're ready to start cutting. And this like draw cord, it came as 12 yards. <laughs> so yeah, we'll be using that for a bit. Oh, it came with a catalog. <laughs> They don't have everything. I have trouble finding a couple of things on there. 
but it, it's not that they don't have something that would work. It's just not the like maybe size I want. Like the draw cord. I just didn't realize that. All right, so we're gonna put the back on the fold. I'm also making this smaller size. So I have so much fabric. Like, it's ridiculous. I can probably make two of these. Like, gosh, how? why do I have so much fabric, you guys? I'm gonna see if my niece wants a um, blanket. Like, I have enough for a blanket. Yeah, same here, Penny. It doesn't help that George the deer came and was eating the tops off our tomatoes. Like, he ruined our plants. All right, so we got the back on here and it was kind of perfect that it was my nephew who's the larger size and who wanted black so I could cut his size off of the paper and then go through and cut my nieces. I don't like cutting through thick fabric with a paper pattern that ruins the pattern. All right. I think if you're cutting out the back, what I would definitely do is put a little nip at the center back neck right there. Just something, it's cause you're gonna do it anyway when we go to sew, you might as well just do it now. I think I should match the stripes. So we got a heck ton of fabric. <laughs> so let's see, here's our back. Look at how cute this is gonna be you guys. <laughs> and the fabrics, look at the the, fa the colors are a little better in the face cam. It's more purpley. Like this color right here, it looks like the purple of the thumbnail that you saw at the beginning of the stream. All right, so I'm gonna leave this like this and I'm going to put the um, front right up against this to kind of match up the stripe a little bit. Too much rain? Oh my gosh, we did not have that problem here. I think that some of the things you want to think about when you're cutting this out, because this is actually a pretty easy pattern to sew, I would say that the difficulty is mostly in getting everything to line up across the front, across that center front zipper, because it's sneaky stuff like that that kind of goes, dang it, I didn't, I forgot my pocket might not line up across or your, your waistband or something, right? So that's why I'm saying that because maybe be careful when you're cutting right now just to make sure that you're starting off on a good foot. Oops, I just threw paper in my fabric bin. <clears throat> okay. I don't really think you need any notches on this. Uh, can I get my sleeves over here too? That would be kind of crazy. But you know, oh my gosh, I kind of can. That's nuts. I have so much fabric, you guys. <laughs> The, this is the world's smallest grain line I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> so um, I'm going to fold my sleeve in half and find my grain line. Yeah, pattern matching, right, Nancy? I mean, why not, right? It's a galaxy. Oh, yeah, I already did. I actually already found my grain line on there. I just didn't write it, but we'll write it on there. You don't want your knits to get torqued, so you should definitely check your grain lines, even though it's just a, it's not just a, a hooded sweatshirt, you know. Did someone just fall? Oh, I probably have alerts off. That's what it is. I knew there was something else. Someone, someone just subscribed. We didn't get to say welcome. Oh, there we go. Whoa, whoa. Just because we really like the uh, alerts, don't we? <laughs> 
Okay. Do I have this zoomed in? Oh, I hate this new update they did on the computer where every time I'm near my taskbar, this whole like weather and news thing pops up and it covers my screen. All right, there we go. So now we have our grain line. I'm gonna straighten out my knit. And then I'm going to, so I'm cutting this inner brown line, which you can probably barely see, but it means I can get this all the way down here. I cut a tiny bit off my fleece yesterday to test one of the eyelets. One thing about those Dritz eyelets I showed you at the beginning is they are so far apart. Like I feel like I needed to put a few more layers of fabric in there. In there. Can I really, Elena? I looked and I couldn't find it. I really need to. It's a, really a problem. Like I don't mind it on my desktop, but um, for my streaming computer, it's, it's a, an issue. So I'm just finding my green. The, uh, it's a little deceptive, like where, where it's at. Um, you know, Mafio, funny you should ask that because the rib knit I used on my nephews was a tubular knit. Do you have a question about it? Do you need some like, like how to use it? Because it's, it is kind of an interesting, oh my gosh, I keep throwing paper into my fabric bin. I mean, that'll compost, but still. Hey, welcome Jennifer. I don't know if you're watching us live. Tubular knits are really great. I feel like they are easier to stay on grain. News and interest. You win today. <laughs> Turn off. You win. Elena, you win. Oh my God. Thank you. I looked in a completely different place to turn that off. Oh my gosh. All right, so there's no notches on the sleeve cap. <laughs> yeah, Elena, yeah, you win the prize for a Good Samaritan today. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I don't think that this is big enough to use for any of these pattern pieces here. Look at all this fabric, you guys. I still have easily a yard and a quarter, maybe a yard and a third left. Uh, yeah, Mafio, you can do that. Um, if you are cutting two of something, then you can leave it in the tube. Um, but yeah, just it's it is just it. Most knits are actually, mm, that's not true. I feel like what I'm, whatever I was about to say might be a little outdated information too, but um, a lot of knits are actually like knitted in a tube and then they'll, they'll cut it apart. And so it'll be a fee. Like if you wanted to, if you're a garment manufacturer and you were ordering fabric and you're like, they would say, you, we can cut it and roll it open flat, but it's a fee. <laughs> yeah, and just, if it's a rib, just follow like one of those ribs. I'm sure it was fine, Penny. Yeah, right, Nancy? I think uh, she's gonna be living in this fabric for a while. <laughs> I guess I don't really see using any of it in my life for something. <laughs> as cute as it is. All right, so we're gonna do this hood and there are two cutting options on the hood if you're doing the lined or unlined version i'm doing the unlined there's also a collar version of this and if anyone's sewing it and wants me to walk them through it just please tell me tomorrow when we're sewing 
Oh, I kind of did that a little too close to the edge. I could have done it, but uh, eh. Make sure that I'm looking at my line. Making sure it's parallel to the fold so it's on the grain. You want the outermost line at the center front hood if you're um, not, not lining it because you need a hem allowance to turn back. Okay. The only thing you really need uh, is a marking on here. Well, there's only one marking on here and it is this um, little drill hole here. That's for your opening for your draw cord, whether you're gonna do a buttonhole or not. <clears throat> for me, I know it's this really far one since I use this one for my nephews. So I'm just gonna put a pin in there. And we're gonna do that right off the bat tomorrow. So if you wanna sew along with me, you might wanna be ready to do your buttonhole because I'm gonna do an eyelet and it might be, a, I was gonna say it might be a little faster, but let's be real, I'll hem and haw. <laughs> okay, so we just need our pocket in this fabric and then we're gonna cut the ribbing. All right, so this little pocket, can you imagine putting this little tiny pocket on a zero to nine month hoodie? <laughs> He's so cute. Uh, these can be really confusing in my experience. These can be really confusing because sometimes when you're sewing it, you're like, wait, is it like this? Or is it like this? So just kind of don't get lost in the sauce. Maybe keep the pattern piece with it so you remember. When I sewed this for my nephew though, I did find that it was really hard to turn back this hem allowance here. And I found that it didn't reach, see that? It doesn't reach the edges here. Sorry, it's so bright. This wasn't a problem though, because we end up turning back the top and stitching it down and this end here too. Like that, right? So that's the, so this, you stitch this down first and maybe this fabric doesn't meet, meet all the way, but it also is less bulky when you turn it back and you will be in, you will be lined up with that edge there. Okay. Cause I was, I was trying to make it like lay flush. I'm like, well, there's a shape there. Uh, and it wouldn't. <laughs> And I knew that one wouldn't, when, just when I was cutting it out, I was like, oh, that's interesting. But, you know, we do turn that down. So I just trusted the process. All right, so do we want to match this? We want to match this. Let's do it. Here you go, a little pattern matching. I know you guys eat that stuff up. So let's see here. Let's look at our little hoodie here. What we could do is we could find it on the fabric here. Um, we only need one, so. Let's pull it apart. <clears throat> it's like, it's like camouflage, but with a galaxy. Uh -huh. Where is it? I want to get lucky. Here we go. Look, here's one right here. Okay, so I'm lining this fabric up with the um, print. Okay. Yeah. All right, and this pocket lines up to the bottom of your, you can't even see my front here, but here it is. <laughs> it lines up really good. So um, can you see, here it is. So this pattern piece lines up to the corner here. And remember, it's tall and it seems narrow, but it's not, remember, it's a really small hand. And if you were wearing this, it'd be like this, okay? 
to line that up. And sometimes what I do is I'll um, like fold this up like that. Well, let's see. Let's maybe it's this way I go like this. I'll fold this back like that. And then I'll hold this down like that. But I didn't quite make it on here. So this is probably not a good spot. So let's try and find another one. We have plenty of fabric and we have both ends that we can check too. So let's see, is this right here? No, it's right. There it is, that's it right there. <laughs> Is it? Oh, it's like, it's like, I'm lost in outer space here. I one time was trying to do something like this for a project and then I lost my little piece in the piece of fabric. <laughs> it kind of drove me crazy. This is a, no. Oh my gosh. Is it upside down? No. We'll find it. All right, I'm gonna try from the other side. I cut it going this direction though, so I'm not gonna flip it over. Let's see. I'm gonna look for this. There it is right there. Okay. Okay. Okay, we have the things we do for family. We either really slack for them or we go over and above. Let's see. I don't think this one is going to be. Now I really want to recut this front so they match. Yeah, we need to do that. Oh, but then that means my, my back won't match. Oh, I should have planned this out so much differently. I think I'm going to match the fronts. I'm not gonna worry about the sides of the back. It'll match this one. You know what I mean, jelly beans? All right, so if you wanted to truly match and you were doing something that was an overlap, you couldn't cut these budding up against each other. You'd actually have to find this repeat because you, what you need is you need it to be like overlapping a little bit because it turns back, right? But because this zipper gets sewn right down the middle and it turns back, it's interrupting it anyway. So we can actually just do this butted up like this. Oh, that's awesome, Melinda. I think I saw that. That's a really fun pattern. Okay, for this one, all I need is the pocket, right? It's gonna go right here. This one, I'm gonna cut out the whole front. And now I'm gonna have to find this front again. <laughs> so let's see if I can actually find it. It must be over here. Maybe not. Maybe that's it. Imagine doing this repeat. Oh, there it is right there. Right? No, that's not it. Oh my gosh, this, this repeat is kind of kooky. I want this, but I need this again. Maybe, nope, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna look at the big picture here. What is this, is that it? No. Is this a huge repeat or something? That's not it. Is this it, is this it, is this it? Nope, that's not it. Holy moly.
There it is right there. Err. And then it's right here as well. So what I could do is recut my fronts. Am I going so too crazy? I may have to make two of these anyway and then just donate the other one since I'll have pieces. But what I could do is make two new fronts right here. As long as I don't go beyond this. Then I could get the pockets right there. Okay, that's my plan. All right, so this is a good lesson <laughs> on if you want a pattern match and you just think, oh, it's a galaxy print, I don't really need a pattern match, and then you're like, but wait, that would be so nice. Maybe think about it ahead. Because, you know, it just makes it so much better. All right, so we're gonna cut this out here and here. And see, look at, here is this, here is this like star, and that's it right there. So we have enough to put our pockets right there. Whew. <laughs> right, Terry? <laughs> How's it going, Nicole? I like that this star right here will be like right on our chest there. Like right, it's front and center. All right. Also be careful if you're cutting your pieces out individually that you don't go like past and then right into where you, you might need to be able to um, pattern match it. So here we go. We'll just cut her right front out. And yes, I will look to see how the back's gonna line up because I did this. I already did that. This is what I need. It's very awkward to cut on camera if you hadn't known. All right. All right, and so then let's go. Oh, I, I barely cut that close. I cut that really close. I really like making this hard on myself. I guess I could, if my backup plan probably, I probably just would have ended stream. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Yeah, this fabric looks much better in person too. The colors are a little more, um, <clears throat> I was gonna say homogenous. That's not really the word I'm looking for. There's less ver variety in the colors on the camera than there are in real life. Like it looks blue and green and black, but it's not. It's, it's purple and navy and green. And blue. You can't see the purple at all. What the heck? What the heck? Okay. So this is the front I need. Not that one over there in the timeout corner. Now let's cut our pocket. This is why I over ordered fabric, I guess. I don't know. This place, um, does partial yards too, so. I think I just followed the, what I needed probably for the size 14 by accident. Okay, so I really just need to worry about this down here, right? And then remember this pocket, it lines right up with that. Or actually, you could just line it up to that one right there. So let's just cut the bottom edge of this all the way across. Okay. And then we know 
Those are good ones. <laughs> it goes right here. When you're doing these interior corners, I often give it a tutorial on how to, to do those. I, I'm really just cutting it. I'll clean it up in a second if I didn't get quite in the corner. Just because I'm more worried about the pattern matching right now. It just takes practice. But um, oftentimes what I do for these kinds of things is I'll cut up and then I'll lift this up, fold it, and then I'll cut into it. And I can go past where I just cut so that then I have gone through the corner. Because, you know, often you get that little thread, or that little corner there, and it's such an annoying little thing. Like right here, see, I still have it attached. And sometimes I just gently pull like that and then disconnect it. All right. So now let's look and see what the back is going to look like with this, these fronts now. Let's just make sure we're going to be okay with it. <laughs> yeah, it's called rage quitting, Nancy. <laughs> I mean, you guys have definitely probably seen every time it's almost happened here, right? I mean, there were a couple times where I was just like, okay, that's it. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> All right, so this is, we're going to lay it out like this to see what are we going to get when we sew this together and are we okay with that? I mean, are we okay with this? Does it bug us that it's not matching on the side seams? It doesn't bug me, but I know that if I saw it matching, it would be very pleasing to the eye. Like this side actually doesn't really call attention to itself. This one does because it inter it's interrupted right here. Here's the deal. If I wanted to try and match it, it's probably almost impossible and that and and it's because I it would have to be the repeat would have to be the exact same width of the these three pat these two pattern pieces together right so and we just saw how hard it was just to find the pockets to match all right so let's just even see if there's a hope of getting it so if this is the front we couldn't even find this repeat on this side so I'm not even sure I can do it. You know what I mean? Let's look for that. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay, okay. All right, so I could have gotten a pocket over here. This is more vibrant right here. Close enough, right? Terry's like, yes, yeah, is why I don't do this. Okay. But if I put the, the back right here to match this side seam, and um, we'll say I actually overlap it enough for the seam allowance so it would actually match. Would I actually be matching here? No, I wouldn't. So I can't really can't do it. It is what it is. Right now we're going for fabric preservation instead. Okay, now we're on to our fiddly bits, the ribbing and stuff like that. Look at all this fabric I have. And then I'll put these fronts with this you know, maybe my, my sister will be like, she has a best friend and they need matching sweatshirts. <laughs> I'll be like, great. <laughs> so happy to hear it. No, my sister never asks for anything at all, like ever. Um, where's the instructions at? Let's see, this rib knit chart, which is page 19. So this pattern piece isn't included. You need to actually consult the instructions for the size that you're making. And 
I will admit on my nephews, I actually pieced them all together and made one long piece. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So this is probably gonna be the only modification I'm gonna do. Kinda Nancy. I just saw a cute meme about a pug and it, and it was like this rating system. And it said, snoring plus four, breathing minus 10, neck rolls plus six. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Very accurate. Sometimes my pug, he'll be snoring so bad that I'm like, is he getting any air in there? And so I'll just take my foot and kind of like lift his neck up a little bit and just kind of stretch him out a little bit with my foot. I just kind of like pull him a little and then he just starts breathing really fully and not snoring at all. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> all right, so this is the standard sleeve cuff. We don't want that. We just want, if you're doing the thumb hole one, if you want doing the thumb hole one, you only need this pattern piece. And you want the greatest amount of stretch going across, just like these will be. I'm gonna do the thumb holes, like I said. But we're gonna get the neck, the waistband first, and so I need a calculator. And we're doing the size eight. So <clears throat> the height of it is five and three quarters for this size. It's different for different sizes. So I'm gonna add the front and the back minus an inch and a half for the seam allowances on them. No, 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 no. I feel like this calculator is so weird. Minus 1.5. And I'll tell you why I say that before, after I write this down. And I'll show you my math here. So this waistband was designed, I'm sorry, I know it's bright. I'm gonna get a better pen too. I'll do it on here. This waistband in the pattern is designed to have a front, a back, which is longer than the front, and then another front, right? If we wanna add all these together, we have to remove this seam allowance, that seam allowance, that seam allowance, that seam allowance. This is three quarters total, this is three quarters total, which gives you one and a half. So um, then I just took the, cause you're not removing the seam allowance here at the center of front, just at the side seams here, three eighths, three eighths, three eighths, three eighths. And that's what gets me to that minus one and a half inch. Um, you don't want to just leave it in there because your ribbing needs to kind of cinch it in, you know. If you're using a fabric that is really stiff and boardy for the main body of your um, sweatshirt and it doesn't stretch very much, it's supposed to stretch 50%, but maybe you're like, ah, let's make a bigger size, you know. If it doesn't stretch very much, then yeah, maybe you leave a little bit of your seam allowance in there. It'll be a little easier to attach, but at the same time, if your ribbing is really stretchy, you should be fine, so... <laughs> That's funny, Carrie. <laughs> right, Nancy? <laughs> Your Nansen. What's a Nansen? Oh, that's nice, Nancy. Parrots live a long time, though. All right, so then the pattern piece I end up with is a long rectangle. Oh uh, yeah, I can draw, right? And so the length mean, means this height. So the short end here, this is your length of your waistband, which is the height as well. And then the width is the you know, front, back, front, all added up. I'm getting a, a phone call. Should we answer it live on stream? I guarantee it's someone telling me that my warranty on my car is almost expired and I really need to redo it or something. All right. I find cutting things like this out, like these long narrow pieces, I actually hate cutting things like this out, especially, I, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter if I have a pattern piece or I don't have a pattern piece. I, I hate cutting them out because they just seem like they get off really easily, you know? 
And so I'm going to look at my, my, I have a selvage on this fabric right here. I'm just going to line it up with the grid on my table. And we will, we will go by this one here, this grid here, and we'll just get ourselves a nice straight line. Now, if you have a fabric that has a really obvious, um, you know, because it's ribbing and it's knit, if it has an obvious line to follow, follow it. You don't want your ribbing to be torqued. You don't want it to, um, you don't definitely want to make sure you're cutting it square, like meaning the both long sides are exactly the same. I'm not using ribbing, Terry, but it's going to act like ribbing. It is a really, really stretchy French Terry. Terry. Nande Kunur and his son. Oh, Nansen. I thought you spelled, you had Nancy's name, um, like you had accidentally typed it wrong. This is, this fabric rolls and now I'm kind of like, ooh, I really want to interface it, but we know that I'll lose some stretch when we do that. So we're not going to do that. So let's get... <clears throat> this ruler here and we're going to get our five and three quarters about started here oh my gosh okay yeah right Nancy <laughs> Yeah, those are those would be pretty handy. If you're cutting a fabric that is curls really badly, let's see if I can cut along this with my back of my blade there. Oh yeah, I can. I'm just gonna cut a nice long parallel piece and then I'm gonna figure out my length. Um, if you're cutting fabric that rolls really easily, what I recommend doing is don't cut it too far in advance of your project because it'll just roll, roll, roll before you get there. This is plenty of fabric. I'm going a little too far. But, you know, maybe the, this will work for the cuffs at the end as well. I wasn't as careful with the grain line down here at the end either. Now we'll get our 20 and a quarter. All right, so that's the ribbing of the waistband. See, it's, it's got a heathered texture, super stretchy, flat back. It's gonna be a pain in the butt to sew because <laughs> uh, it rolls. So I'm gonna fold it up like this, flatten out all these edges. I do this sometimes. I'm gonna put it aside I'm going to set my ruler on it overnight. I'm just going to leave it like that till tomorrow when we go to sew it. All right, so now I just need two cuffs and the thumb holes. So let's see if I can get it out of this piece. Usually cuffs are the same height as a waistband, but not always. These cuffs are actually pretty long, which is kind of interesting because you can do this with them. You can. They're so long. See that? You could actually fold it like this. So if it's too long of a sleeve for your kiddo, you could always fold it in half. That's awesome, Nancy. You know, what did I just hear about that I thought you might be kind of into? Oh, Libby's taking this. Sorry, Libby. Is this okay if I say this? You're take. Oh no, it's not Libby. It's Barbara. Barbara's taking this um, quilt class, and the woman specializes in Bernina feet, sewing feet. And so this whole quilt you sew is using these Bernina feet. It just seemed like right up your alley. I know you love gadgets and things. <laughs> all right. So this is obviously not. I don't know why I just spent all the time fixing that. It's not tall enough for these. 
but it will be tall enough for my thumb hole pieces. She is right here. You need four each of those. All right, so I'm just gonna line this up. I'm gonna try and preserve as much as my of my selvage as possible for that future cutting project. It's like, you know, being kind to my future self and giving myself a little bit of a, um, you know, gift that I preserve my my uh, salvages so that I can tell if I'm on grain or not. All right, so let's cut these. So remember, you want this cuff to be the greatest amount of stretch going across the short distance of this cuff, of either of the cuffs, and same with the waistband. Um, some knits will actually have a pattern that may, like the, the pattern that's woven into it, like this heathering or prints or something, may make it look like it's going the wrong direction, but you need that greatest amount of stretch. <laughs> right, Nancy? Yeah, I, I uh, hear you on that. I think I nicked my blade on one of my uh, weights just now. Like I touched it. I know it's almost time to change my blade. All right, so same thing. I'm gonna put these in my little ruler purgatory here. They will not curl. Um, once I add those little guys to it, it will, I'll put a bigger ruler on there. All right, so let's see if we can get these guys out of this piece. We need four. <laughs> Ooh, I can do it. Yay. Um, let me use this one here. These are the thumb hole pieces, so if you're not um, doing the thumb hole, don't worry about it. My nephew didn't want the thumb hole. I was kind of, like, this whole project worked out really good that the easier to see fabric need, wanted the thumb hole, because I would have just done a separate tutorial. Starch purgatory. Yeah, you know, Nicole, thank you for reminding me of that. Maybe I should do that, too. I've been really enjoying fusing knits with that fusible trico. It's so satisfying um, and it works so good, but it does reduce the stretch amount, you know? All right. We got everything. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna starch these. Thank you for the reminder. I'm late to the starch game. That we did this really fun stream, just in case you're new here, where all these folks sent me links to tips, to like YouTube videos that were sewing tips or hacks, um, because they either wanted me to try it and test it, or because they love it, or they've you know always had it like sitting there and they just never got around to trying it out. And it was a really fun stream, and I used some of the weirdest stuff I've ever brought to my sewing machine, like a drinking straw, um, tin foil. What was the other weird thing I got? Um, paper clip, I think. And we debunked a few. Some of them were miserable failure, but some of them we were like, heck, this is awesome. And, and a couple of folks have even been using some of the things we did in there. And we have to do that again. It was so much fun. And it was really funny gathering all the things I needed because the, the funny thing about the straw is that my husband works at Clean Canteen. And so there isn't a plastic straw in our life anywhere. Okay, Terry, see you tomorrow. Hasta mañana, iguana. Oh, the, the cut can, like we had a soda can. 
<laughs> and I linked, a, I put a link to every video that we referenced in there just to kind of, you know, give them some credit. But um, it was, it was pretty amazing. It's worth watching. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Okay, so I think that's everything we've got. Remember for our findings, we have our zipper and I wanna see what, what size zipper, just cause Sydney's question, I know she probably left for a meeting, but she had the question of, is the, does the zipper need to be the right length? And I'm just kind of curious if mine is the right length cause I don't remember. I ordered it at the beginning of the month or probably before. Uh, zipper lengths and inches. I needed a, 12 inch, 17 inch zipper. And this is, I think an 18 inch. So this is a little long. <laughs> um, I have my twill tape. I really wish I had a narrower one. Maybe what I could do is fold this in half and sew it down and make it narrower. I could cut it, but yeah, the cutting of twill tape, you know, like that's risky business. It'll just unravel probably. Uh, I have these eyelets. So I'm gonna use eyelets on the hood. So if you wanna use a buttonhole, you can do a buttonhole. I think that's a great idea. It's also softer so that when you pull your hoodie out of the dryer, you can put it on and it won't burn your chin. That's never happened to any of us, right? <laughs> okay. All right, that's it. <laughs> what, you bought an Ulfa circle cutter? Adjustable, oh, cool. <laughs> do, you, do you use a lot of circles? Yeah, so one of the cool gadgets someone mentioned in a Patreon Zoom yesterday was um, a foot on the machine that lets them sew in a circle. Bonjour, Florence. Comment ça va? Je ne parle pas français, though. <laughs> I can just fake it really good. Je ne pas. All right. <laughs> of course it's not. <laughs> you just had to have it. The free shipping paid for it. Okay, I don't need this. All right, let's see what we got. Let's lay it all out. I didn't clean up the side of my table here. It's a little bit cluttered. Oh yeah, so are the aglets for the ends of the drawstring? Cause I didn't, I didn't get those for these because they were so heavy duty, but you can get really cool um, drawstring ends at Maker's Fabric. They have an amazing supply of them. Yeah, and um, I looked because it kept kind of sneaking up on me how many pieces of hardware I needed for this project. You know? Ooh, matchy match. Did you mean to match that? Why, yes, I did. Yeah, and, and um, I used them on my Kelly Anorak. So satisfying, Nicole, so satisfying. Lost in space. Did you guys ever watch The Muppet Show and they had pigs in space? <laughs> I have to say, I never liked Miss Piggy. She really stressed me out. And I didn't understand why Kermit liked her so much. He could do better, you know what I mean? Like one of those chickens that, you know, fawned over Gonzo. They would have loved Kermit. All right. Here we go. 
There's a very obvious right and wrong side to polar fleece as well. So usually you're going to see, I don't know if you can even see it, but it's, I want to say that this side is duller and smoother. This side is a little nubblier. Now, when I worked somewhere where we use these, um, we used one of the really big fleece makers at the time, the one, the people who had developed it, Polar Tech, right? And when we met with them, like we would meet with like people that work there occasionally. Usually, you know, you just go through your vendor and someone orders the fabric and, you know, it's this whole thing you're kind of cut out of the process of, even though you're a designer. And um, I learned that the right side of the fabric, like ideally, it's the same with waterproof fabrics, in fact. The inside of the fabric is actually more ideal to be on the outside of the garment. It just doesn't look as nice. So we never do that. And it's the same with waterproof fabrics, the really good quality ones. It's actually be more waterproof to put the inside to the outside world. This isn't true for all waterproof fabrics. In fact, waterproof fabrics are kind of complicated. But um, it was kind of like a... We were really torn because we were really making extremely functional things, things that saved people's lives, you know. So we we were really torn on some things like, do we use this inside out because this is actually better? It would be better for the end user. But we knew like hanger appeal wouldn't really permit that. So it was a really interesting discussion. <laughs> oh my God, Nancy. She was such a tease. She was so manipulative. That's what it was. She was so manipulative sometimes. You know what I mean? I feel like she was honestly a poor portrayal of a woman. I mean, she was a pig. I know. And you know, you guys, I'm basing these feelings and emotions off a, literally an eight-year-old. So I, I haven't really looked at much Miss Piggy footage to see what she's really like. That was just my impression at the time. My favorite characters from The Muppet Show were Statler and Waldorf and the Swedish chef. And Statler and Waldorf were the like punk, the, the punk old guys that sat in the bal balcony heckling them. Camille the chicken, right? Exactly. Gonzo kind of stressed me out too, but um, I liked him. I liked his skits and things. And the Swedish Chef, which they added to one of the games I play called Overcooked, and I was like, though, oh, secretly kind of pleased. All right, <laughs> we're on a Muppets. My mom and I would watch that when I was a kid, though. <laughs> Do you mafia? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know that song, Manamana, do 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 do. That was like from a spinoff of the Muppet show that I never got to see. But like all the like Muppet movies, I love those as a kid. They were so funny. And I really loved just how much my mom thought they were funny. Yeah, Kermie, yeah. Some of the, the GIFs or GIFs, whatever you say, when you're looking them up on your phone for the Muppets are really good. <laughs> Did he, Margie? <laughs> That's so funny. Do, 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 do. He was so funny. I feel like him when I'm in the kitchen. My husband would probably agree, too. I'm trying to think of who else I really liked. Fozzie Bear, kind of. He kind of stressed me out, too, though. Some, some, when some, when critters or people make bad choices when I was a kid, that kind of made me upset. And I think like that show was kind of abstract for a kid, like what they're putting on a show. Like I didn't really get it, but you know, I was kind of young, so. All right, well, I'm gonna sew this tomorrow, so you're welcome to come along. Um, I'm gonna need to be using my serger. Probably use my cover stitch on the pocket opening and on the hood hem. I cannot guarantee I will use it on the hood hem. I couldn't get it to get past the eyelets on my nephews. Muppet Christmas Carol, right? <laughs> yep. My mom would really appreciate this debate. I'm trying, I can't remember a whole lot else from that show, but when I see things of it, it really comes. I even had the board game, but definitely Statler and Waldorf. They were kind of mean. Oh, that's so funny, Melinda. I think, I feel like that kind of stuff is so out of context 
for people because it's normal to them. But when at the time that that was not normal, like seeing this puppet show at a at a prime time hour. <laughs> really, Nicole, that's awesome. I love it. They were the hecklers, yeah. Statler and Waldorf were the hecklers. They're, I, but they were really, really funny. <laughs> like, I, I really get stressed out when people aren't nice, but I did love the hecklers, so what does that say about me? So, anyway, anyway you're all welcome to come. We're going to be sewing this tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be using my serger and my cover stitch and my single needle a little bit, which means my straight stitch machine. I sew in an industrial sewing machine for the most part. Um, you do absolutely do not need to use a serger or cover stitch with this project. I am just having a lot of fun using mine lately. And um, for probably two years of this live stream, I rarely used my serger and cover stitch, just proving that you didn't really need one. Especially with polar fleece, there's no reason on earth at all to use a serger to finish edges. You just need to make sure that the garment can stretch and there's really simple ways to go about that using a single needle or straight stitch machine. Uh, I don't have a zigzag on my machine, but yeah, just stretching a seam and then sewing it while it's stretched, that's all you gotta do. Uh, sergers are fairly recent invention and, and knits aren't that old either. So they weren't always used to sew them together. So uh, we'll be putting the rib knit on, on the cuff and on the bottom. Um, I think you're going to find that this is a pretty easy sew, especially if you don't do all of the bells and whistles like the eyelets or the twill tape. So it's a pretty quick sew, but I'm going to do those things just to give you that option so it can look as store-bought as possible. I feel like personally kids are the, the toughest customer. You definitely, like they feel like they don't want anyone to know it was homemade sometimes. They want it to look like it was store-bought, you know? So that's why I give you the most store-bought looking version, even though homemade is perfect. So, all right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. And then on Saturday, if you're in the blazer sew along, I'll be sewing part three. Sewing part three, but sew along part seven. I'll be uh, sewing up the lining, which is this fabric here, because I squeezed this shirt out, didn't I? All right, I'm going to off to starch all my... Um, little bits there. I hit the like button. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. And if you are new here, you can learn more about me on my website. I'm actually putting together a, a profile thing, but I have been sewing for quite a bit now since for like 35 years, <laughs> ah, but I still make mistakes. It's so much fun. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Hasta mañana, iguanas.